Okay, Wisp, check this out. Check this out. Here we go. The new card. Zoe! Wait, Zoe revealed? Wait! We're not even getting support cards. What the hell? Oh, that's a weird image. Zoe! One mana, one, one elusive. I've seen that before. Nexus Strike. This is literally TMO. Create a super cool star chart in hand. Or if you have one, reduce this cost by one. I've seen you play 10 cards with different names. Whew. So it's it's the sub Percival archetype. And sub Percival actually is not bad, by the way. Like if Zoe helps that, sub Percival is, is ready. It's time for sub Percival. Super cool star chart. First, invoke a celestial card that costs three or less. Okay, so it's just another spacey. Paddle Star, is this your champ spell? Deal four to an enemy that attacked this round or is stunned. You know what? I'm a bit of a, a connoisseur of the mechanical nature of Zoe. I've played a lot of Zoe for my time playing League of Legends, at least eight games of her. I can say I approve of this mechanical coherence between the card and her in-game concept. Spell Thief. Pick one of three enemy spells, play this game, and create a copy in hand. Oh fuck, I love this shit. Ah, ah this is great. So presumably, this will, if the enemy has played more than three spells, it'll probably show you three random spells. Or three three of the random spells out of the ones they've played, right? Hey, what you got there? It's nab, but you can choose. I mean, that really works. So when she levels up for the rest of the game, when you summon an ally, grant its keywords to allies. Next is straight, create... Uh, behold the infinite that costs zero in hand. <laughs> okay. Huh. That's a little... That's a little terrifying. Oh, no, not the sparkle fly. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> okay. Huh. So we we need to actually think about how viable, like how good that's gonna end up being. We're gonna have to see the full picture with all the cards here. Okay, perfect. Let's check this out. So we're gonna start with the initial impressions. If you're watching this on YouTube, I recently remembered that I've been going back through and updating my initial impressions. Cause I'm always on, on my stream on Twitch, I'm always spending like a couple hours at, uh, you know, evaluating the cards, thinking about different decks to run them in and talking with other players. And usually after that, I go through and update a pinned comment with, you know, on the video with kind of like more accurate than initial impressions. Because initial impressions are obviously not going to be very accurate because it's literally five minutes of looking at the cards. Okay. Anyway. The initial impressions. <clears throat> Why is her head so huge? Her, her art is a little disconcerting <laughs> impossible to level up she is one of the harder champions to level up it looks like let's let's check this out so sleepy trouble bubble up here sleepy trouble bubble stun an enemy create a fleeting paddle star in hand shuffle a zoe into deck and that's her champ spell <sighs> So it's a Targon stun. There there feels like there's a lot of different ways to build Zoe. You could build her with Pursuit of Perfection. She does have some tie-in with Victor, although not as much as I thought she would. She could be like I I could see a weird case to try to build her with like a sort of Targon stun archetype. Like Leona Yasuo was actually not that far from making sense. And with a bit more stun support, it does make more sense. Like, Zoe is definitely, you can build her in a lot of different ways. 
Starry Scamp, I cost two less if you behold a Celestial. So, basically, it's a two mana 2-2 two, two that if you have a Celestial anywhere, it's a zero mana 2-2. Two, two, which is pretty interesting. You can play it on turn one in Targon, because all you have to do is play the um, Spacey Sketcher on one, right? If you play Spacey Sketcher on one, then you can just play Starry Scamp on turn one. Here, let me move my camera here. So Scary Camp is Scary Camp is cute. Um, the the fact of the matter though that like a zero mana two two doesn't do as much if you don't play it like turn one. So it is it is a little dependent on Spacey Sketcher, but it's a uh, pretty great. It's pretty great if you actually have a Celestial deck that can reliably get it early. And then Sparklefly is just a two mana one two elusive life steal. So we can compare this with Kinku Life Blade. Uh, and this is like crazy, 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 crazy better than Kinku Lifeblade. This is like two less mana for one less attack, and it's in a better region for what Kinku Lifeblade wants to do. Sparkle Fly is actually kind of crazy. Wow. That, I think that's a little nuts. All, all, all you need is to just have some permanent buff on this. Like, you can run this in, you know, other, other concepts as well. Two mana for one more attack. Kinko Lifeblade is honestly like more recently than than I think people give credit for. Like it's it's been messed around with some decks. Like when when you buff it by this much, two mana for one attack, and give it a region that has more permanent buffs. Like this card is actually becomes really really sweet. Okay, so overall, let's let's think about these cards and how exa how likely we are to actually use them. Wisp. Wisp, what do you think? Oh, she's she just wants to nap here on my lap. Okay, how fast do you think she would level up? Not very fast at all. Like, seeing you play ten cards with different names. The problem is, of course, this word, right? I've seen you play ten cards with different names. Wait, this is way too thick. I don't want that. I've seen you play ten cards with different names. That's like, you have to play her turn one. And she has to survive basically like six turns, plus you have to build the deck around it. This is, this is one of the harder cards to level up. It's pretty crazy. But you get the, uh, the super cool star chart. Basically, if you have one, it reduces cost by one. Or, oh man, that's an or. So if you already have a, so you just have to use it every time. And super cool star charts, like, it's like a Behold the Infinite, except it, it draws from the Spacey Sketcher pool. I mean, her Nexus Strikes will will cause her to level up at a decent rate. But, yeah, like, even, even if you build around it, she's going to be really hard to level. And her payoff isn't really, like, insanely high either. Like... Her, her level payoff is actually, I think, even lower than Teemo's level payoff. Like, Teemo's level up is actually a little scary sometimes. If you just get one or two attacks off, you can threaten to end the game. But this just starts creating a couple Behold the Infinites that cost zero, which, you know, isn't isn't as great. But you have the Grant Cures to all allies. So if you own the board, if you own the board with a leveled up Zoe, then if you have a deck even built more around that, like... Pursuit of Perfection. Sorry, not Pursuit of Perfection. Sub Percival. Sub Percival, I think if, if you're building a deck around Zoe, it feels hard for it to not be a Sub Percival deck. Because on top of like being able to draw a card, like sometimes the elusive from that will be a potential game enter. I could see that. It stays for the rest of the game. She can't die after level. Oh, she can die after level, you're saying. That's interesting. I mean, I, I guess that's what this is implying. I guess for the rest of the game means like even if she dies, she has the ability to be played. I don't know. That's kind of weird. That's how I read it. I mean, honestly, I don't know why it would say this phrase otherwise, right? Failure is the reason a thousand percent. Yeah, these cards are all really weird to evaluate. And keep in mind, Super Cold Star Chart, and like, y even though it gets generated, this is a main deckable card as well. 
So, I think... <laughs> Zoe looks kind of horribly bad. And Zoe herself isn't really amazing here. It's She's one of the harder cards to evaluate. I think she's gonna be... Pretty awkward, just because I think she's too hard to level up. Like, you'd have to be playing against a very specific kind of deck that can't do anything about her to be able to level her up. However, I will say, I think, like, the identity of this kind of concept in Targon, <clears throat> I think it is a lot better than it seems at first. Like, a very cheap, buffable, elusive body in Targon is better than it would be in something like PNZ or Ionia, right? Which we've seen them in. Like, when we compare Zoe to Teemo, the fact that she has, like, very direct and, and guaranteed access to Targon's buff package, like stuff like Pale Cascade and some of the more permanent buff cards, is actually a pretty big deal. That being said, yeah, she, she doesn't look amazing. She doesn't look amazing. It does feel like she's just, like, too hard to level up. I don't know. I, I think I'd really have to see a deck built around that. If you build a, a deck around leveling Zoe up, you can probably turn it into a pretty reliable win condition. Okay. Moving along. Spell Thief. Spell Thief is nuts. Spell Thief is really interesting. So you definitely run it in a deck like this. You definitely run it in any deck that's looking for these like spell triggers. There's a lot we can do with Spell Thief. Spell Thief... We can use in like Starlet Seer decks. Starlet Seer decks were actually like fairly close to using Targon. Let just in terms of a, an, an average deck for Spell Thief, we'd be able to counter a lot of things, right? Like for example, just having the flexibility of it. Like imagine this against something like Fiora Shen. You can basically you're paying one extra mana, but Fiora Shen plays just the right amount of spells. You can basically guarantee what you want this to be at all times. It can be a sharp sight if you need a sharp sight. It can be a deny if you need a deny. Or it can be a, you know, a concerted strike if you need a concerted strike. There's more cards got leaked. Wait, what? More cards. Hang on. Wait a second. What What is going on here? Did they, did they accidentally post the wrong one on the day? Wait a second. I think this, this feels like a... This feels like a miscommunication. Nice job, Brazil. You know what? You guys say nice job, Brazil, but it's much more likely NA messed up because we're getting Zoe kind of like out of sequence almost. <laughs> See, I knew we were supposed to get... I knew we were supposed to get the Riven cards today. I knew it. <laughs> Dude, what the hell? Okay. Hang on. Christmas came early. <laughs> I can translate, guys. Okay, we need a professional translator here. Okay. Kaka eos fracos. Okay, who's got who's got me? Se oponente descarta o seguidor mais fraco de mal. What do you guys think? Call grappler? Alright. I need a I need a professional translator. Grappler, you speak uh Portuguese. Yeah? Are you my are you my Portuguese speaker? You like the hack? Yo, Grappler. How'd you do it? Easy. Okay, Grappler. Tell me tell me what we're Yo. seeing right now. Before you... fraco, seu oponente escra... seguidor mais fraco da mão. Um it means it the name is the name of the card is like Hunt of the Weak and it says your opponent discards its um weakest follower. It's a discard card, dude. Your opponent discards their weakest follower? Huh. From their hand. What? That's... You got discard. So weird. A slow speed spell. So what... What is that even trying to counter? I don't... That's such a bizarre card. I feel like there's not going to be a lot of... Discard. There, there must be some synergy with Riven for that. Okay. Grappler. Kakadora Brutal. What do you think? Kakadora Brutal. Ao invocar, me conceda ataque rápido nesta rodada. Um, when you summon me, give me quick attack this round. Four mana challenger with quick attack Four for mana, one round. And it's got, yeah, huh. Ooh. Yeah. That's not bad. You remember that That's part of uh, Ren Shadowblade? <laughs> this, is, this is like a version <laughs> of Ren Shadowblade that's not completely terrible. 
It's good. I it's... mean, 3-3. Three, three. Yeah, so the problem is, here's the thing about Runeterra, which is that, very famously, a 3-3 three, three on turn 4 is just, like, usually a bit too slow. Like, turn 4 yeah. is the turn where there's bigger threats, and often it's, like, already too late to remove the things you want to remove anyway. Like, even if you have Challenger and Quick Attack. It's not bad, though. Make him a 4-2 and I might play him. Like, 4-2 would be so much better. Oh, yeah. 4-2 would be crazy. All right. Let's keep, let's keep it yeah. rolling. Ooh. Wait. I, I like don't... your pronunciation, by the way. It's actually not bad. Let me try this one. Caviera con la terchicha. You got it perfectly. <laughs> <laughs> native, native speaker. <laughs> All right, so this, well, I mean, this card looks uh, pretty jank. Five seven three challenger. It's trash, That's, right? I mean, it's interesting. I could, I could honestly see it in a weird meta. Like there, there could easily be a meta what? where, like, if there's if there's a deck where, it's it's the premium removal dude. against some big thing. But yeah, I mean, what? not in general. It's, it's like within brittle steel range, dude. Is there, does it like brittle brittle steel and it dude, dies to anything? Nobody runs brittle steel. <laughs> this card plus uh, uh, the moment the meta happens where that work. <laughs> That's horrible, dude. Kato is just better. I can't see that ever seen play. I think can that it, ever see play? It would take a ridiculously specific meta. It's like a five mana vengeance sort of. You got a two mana five one that does that for two. Like you play that for five. Yeah, but this one survives pings. Look, listen, I agree this card is shit. <laughs> <laughs> like, you're making it sound like I like this card. <laughs> I think this card's garbage. It's just like, I can imagine a bizarro world where, like, it, it, it sees, like, very fringe play. But, yeah, I mean, you're it would saying take this, a lot. This, in a bizarro world, actually fits in a, in a tier one deck. Not a tier... Uh, did I say tier one? <laughs> all right, all right. It's like anti-meta kind of thing. <laughs> All right. All right. I Ooh, think this here's, is the last Here's your one. reading opportunity. You got this, buddy. Aral a Restradora. Fim de Redada se voce. Conjurar um feticio. E min nesta rodada. E u globoplego. E u iminimigo. Mais fraco. How'd I do? So, that's actually not bad. Not bad. <laughs> <laughs> So it's a uh, Arel a Rastradora fim da rodada. Se você conjugar um feitiço, é mim nesta rodada. Ele golpeia o inimigo mais fraco. It basically says, um, if you conjure a spell on me, I'm guessing that means if you target me with a spell this round, I attack the weakest enemy. If you, Whoa, what? what does that mean? If you conjure a spell on me, if if, if you target round, it with a spell, it attacks the weakest enemy. Why did it say this round? It's it's a round end, I think. Is it round end? Oh, it's a round end, yeah. Yeah, yeah, end of round, yeah, end of round. If you yeah. played a spell on me this round, I attack the weakest enemy. Because Fim, Fim yeah. is, like, conjugated for the Latin end, right? And Redada, I assume, is round. Yes, sir. It is end of round. Hmm. That's interesting. Huh. Yeah, she strikes the weakest enemy. I mean, if she Actually, wasn't it's not a combat mana... strike. Yeah, yeah. So she's yeah, like, damage. she's kind of like the uh, the Noxcrea Arena built into her. Like she'll always yeah, at but... the end of the turn strike the weakest if you target her with a spell that round. But it, it doesn't. She doesn't take damage. She just strikes. Yeah, she just strikes. Like, it's not a single combat. Ha. Huh. That's kind of oh. cool. Whoa. I mean, it's too expensive, but it's kind of cool. Yeah, I feel it's, like... It's a good control card. It's, at six mana, it, it comes on the board just a little too slow. Like... Yeah. It should be it should Like, be I want that for like, miss rates. <clears throat> yeah, exactly. Like, at turn six, what do you even... Like, what kind of engine can start on turn six and can actually stabilize anything, right? It's two damage per round, especially. Yeah. Like, I think... She should, if, if she costs less, obviously she'd need to have weaker stats, but she'd be more viable as something that you can actually kind of, like, buff and try to protect and, and build around. Whereas, like, yeah. I don't know if we can do that at 6. Well, this was an interesting double reveal day. Damn, that's a lot of cards revealed, dude. 
Yeah. Here, grab. You must have messed up, right? Let me. Go I'll, for I'll it. finish up my initial impressions, and then I'll call you back in like yeah, five yeah. minutes. Okay. We'll we'll do the whole All right, podcast sounds good. thing. All right. See you in a sec. But yeah, overall, overall, these uh, <laughs> this, this, I I bit off more than I could chew. There's there's a lot going on here. This one discards from the opponent hands. I I have to imagine this has some kind of weird synergy with Riven or something because this is like a really bizarre concept. I don't see this being viable outside of that really. Um, this one is actually pretty close. If there's things you want to kill in the meta, then we absolutely can be running this card in a deck that needs something to plan for. It's really not bad. It's at, like we've seen in Runeterra a lot of 4 mana 3-3s three that have powerful effects but have been held back by the stat line. I think this one is actually going to be decent. And then yeah, as pointed out, this one is just kind of a bizarre card. <laughs> it's it's hard to imagine a situation where you'd run this card. It'd be a a really, really narrow situation. And then yeah, this this one's just that 6 mana. And then... Back to the Zoe cards for a second. As I mentioned, I think Sparklefly is going to be really, really good in just any kind of deck where we're playing for, like, any sort of, like, elusive condition. Like, this is really, really scary. It kind of demands some kind of answer, or it can easily snowball the game. I, I actually think this card is nuts. I actually think Sparklefly is is absolutely crazy. I think it's the best card we've seen today. Spell Thief, as, as I, I was kind of like halfway through mentioning it, I think Spell Thief is going to be very good. Again, meta dependent. And the thing is, like at the end of the day, most things on card game are meta dependent. But Spell Thief will hit a lot of decks. The flexibility of it is really, really powerful. It just comes down to being able to have a meta where the none of not too many of the opponent's decks are running concepts that are going to brick this, right? Like, for example, it's not going to be great against, like, Go Hard TF right now. That would kind of brick Spell Thief. Because mostly you're just cloning Go Hard and, um, like, Glimpse. I'm pretty sure this wouldn't clone Pack Your Bags. I'm basically although... Are we going to ignore the fact that I mean, Riot made Zoe lick your face? <laughs> She's not licking your face, you sicko. She's just sticking her tongue out. <laughs> You can clone pack your bags, I'm pretty sure, since you can nab pack your bags. Well, okay, so that's interesting. If you can nab pack your bags... But that's that's a draw. That th This is create a copy and not an exact copy. Whereas pack your bags just draws the card that exists. It's not copying the card. It's not. It's not. Pack your bags is essentially creating an exact copy because it's drawing the exact card from their hands. Whereas I suspect Spell Thief... Might not be able to. If this card can clone pack your bags, then it's crazy right now. But re regardless of that, like, if, if there's a meta where, you know, you don't really have matchups that this card sucks in, Spell Thief is going to be great. It's a super solid card overall. Super cool star chart. Uh, oh, it's probably not going to be main deckable between, like, Behold the Infinite and Spacey Sketcher. I don't think you'd really want to run this card. But... I mean, it does make sense with the kind of like Zoe package or trying to proc a ton of different card effects. I think for the most part, Sketcher is often going to be better than this. <laughs> Sleepy Trouble, a two mana stun that just like, it's basically just stun and create the paddle star after. This one seems pretty awkward. It's at slow speed, which means... I mean, it's like a five, you can do five to deal four, plus stunning the enemy, but if, if you're dealing the damage, you usually don't care that it's stunned because you're killing it that turn anyway. At slow speed, I don't know, This it seems kind of over-costed. Like, I feel like it's fairly rare that we're going to want to main deck Sleepy Trouble. Getting it off of a second Zoe would be decent, though. Main decking Paddle Star. I mean, it's like a very bad flock, and damaging an enemy that already attacked this round is also not amazing, but it's three damage for four. I can't, I can't rule that out immediately. It, it, it does seem like Sleepy Trouble Bubble and Paddle Star aren't as good. I can say I'm more likely inclined right now to main deck Paddle Star than Sleepy Trouble Bubble, just because like paying two extra just for this effect feels less valuable. Friven got leaked too. 
Oh, is this just that meme again? I don't see Riven anywhere in this video, guys. <laughs> I'm I, you're here by force to assume you guys are bamboozling me. <laughs> and the last card I haven't really gone through very thoroughly is Scary Scamp. I cost two less if you behold the Celestial. This card actually looks a little crazy. Um, if you have a deck with three uh, Spacey Sketchers. And stuff like Star Chart or Behold the Infinite. So the thing to understand about Celestial decks, Invoke decks, and this is why Star Starry Scamp is so good. Invoke decks always have too much value and not enough tempo. Like we have to think about how Invoke decks play. Invoke decks always have tons of value and ways to spend their mana. They always have like they never run out of steam because they invoke. And Scary Scamp, the design of this card fits very perfectly into this, right? Because Starry Scamp gives you a way to like keep ownership of the board. And the downside of Scary Stamp Scamp is in some decks you might run out of steam by playing a zero mana two two. But the whole point of Celestials is you're not gonna run out of steam anyway, right? So you do need to be playing this early for it to be impactful. Like playing it on you know, turn one or turn two. If you're not hitting Spacey Sketcher for this to on turn one, you need to be using like something on turn two to be able to play this. But if you can get it on turn one or two, two, it's great. Turn one deal nine damage with three scamp Spacey Sketcher. That is the dream. That is the dream. But yeah, Star Scamp is great. It's very, very good. And again, we it's it's just because of what I said. It's just because in that kind of deck, it fits its downside gets completely covered and it provides an upside that covers that kind of deck, right? It's the perfect synergy card. It's exactly, it is exactly the card that invoke decks needed, right? If invokes had gotten another like slow high value card, even if it looked good, it would be kind of shit because that would be the kind of thing that invokes already have too much of and you just don't need. This is exactly what invokes need. Brazil deleted the tweet. Oh, did they actually? Oh, wait. If Brazil deleted the tweet, that confirms it. If Brazil deleted the tweet, that means... Oh, oh, it did get deleted. Oh, that means that means this was supposed to be tomorrow's. Well, this is a double reveal. Does that mean the leak was real? Fired? Why refresh? Guys, don't tell Riot about this. <laughs> don't, don't get anyone fired. All right. Anyway, guys. You're a leaker now. I got it downloaded. <laughs> anyway, we're good here, guys. This this is overall my initial impressions. There's a lot to talk about today because we have like double double a normal day, plus a champion out of nowhere. So let's 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 get into this. Let's do it podcast style. All right.